It is 5.47. Now, the price of oil fell to its lowest level for two years yesterday, despite the ongoing conflicts affecting Russia and Iraq. At its lowest, Brent crude, that's one of the real benchmark prices, $96.72. That's the cheapest since July 2012. That's just before the Olympics, to put that in context. Price recovered slightly. It's now just under $98. But despite oil prices tumbling, the price of fuel on uh, four courts around the country has barely moved. Back in June, unleaded, £1.30. Diesel, £1.36. Latest data, £1.29 for unleaded, £1.33 or so for diesel. What is going on then? Well, James Spencer is still with us, Managing Director of the Fuel Traders Portland uh, Fuel. So, uh, James, uh, first of all, a, a brief pricey of, of why uh, prices are going down. Uh, shale oil, lots of oil in America, meaning they are importing less, which means countries like Nigeria, which hitherto were sending their oil to America, they're now having to find new markets in, in Europe and the Far East. Uh, and also a recovery of reserves um, from uh, the likes of Saudi Arabia who have been able to build up their reserves. So there is a, I wouldn't say comfortable, but there is a safety net um, out there. And Mickey made the point earlier, Chinese demand has slowed down to a certain extent, although, of course, people can get carried away there. They're still posting 5 to 6% GDP growth, which, you know, that uses a lot of fuel. And, James, the price on the forecourt not going down very much at all. Should we expect to be paying less for petrol and, and diesel? I think long term, if the price keeps uh, kind of generally going down, then yes, you will see it. But people underestimate massively the impact of exchange rate. It is such a huge factor in, in the price we pay for our fuel. Even though oil might be produced in the UK, because oil is sold in dollars, it is effectively an import. And if the price of um, if the exchange rate goes down, i.e. the pound weakens, which we've seen with all the uncertainty around Scotland, that pushes the price up. So you can have a crazy situation, which you had uh, two days ago, where the oil price in dollars per barrel went down by one dollar a barrel. But the diesel pence per litre wholesale price went up by 0.3. And the reason for that is because the exchange rate went from. Uh, you know, 1.65 to 1.64, which doesn't sound a huge drop, but in currency terms, it is. Well, talking of currency, <laughs> Jane Foley is still... We just happened uh, to have a currency uh, Exactly. We just <laughs> happened to have with us uh, Jane Foley, who was our market's guest this morning, senior currency strategist. It's all your fault, Jane, that, uh, that we're paying more for petrol then, is it? Well, currencies really can be a case of the, the tail wagging the dog when it comes to commodities prices. As we've said, commodities are denominated in dollars. And often when you get a dollar recovery, you see the price of commodities just drop, just, a, just an, an automatic knee-jerk reaction like that. And, of course, what we've seen in the, in the currency market is a dollar recovery. Mm. Now, the dollar's been a very weak uh, currency for years, but it is recovering. People are thinking that the Federal Reserve, the, the Central Bank of America, will be hiking interest rates next year. So the dollar is recovering, and that can, have a, uh, that can push prices down. Now, when you're looking at the domestic market, the price of sterling against the dollar, yes, of course it's going to have an effect. Of, on what's the price that we pay in the UK on our forecourts. And what we've seen over the last 12 months is a big rally in sterling knocked lower quite dramatically over recent weeks. Well, talking of the Could states, I, uh, let's... Uh, oh, 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 James, we'll come back to you in a moment. I just want to bring in okay. Bob Tippy. Uh, Bob's the editor-in-chief of Oil and Gas Journal. Joins us, joins us from Houston in Texas. Morning, Bob. Good morning. Um, well, here we are talking about the, the price of, of oil here in the United Kingdom. Um, and James Spencer earlier made the point about the, the effect of shale gas and, and oil over there in, in the States. How do you view that as changing the global oil market? Uh, it's having a tremendous effect. Uh, crude oil production in the United States in, in August was a little over 8.5 million barrels a day. That's up from as low as 5 million barrels a day in 2008. So the the, the increase has been dramatic, uh, as was noted earlier. Uh, that has backed out West African crude oils from the American market, and that you know that that crude's got to find a home. So so that's competing with Brent crude, and we're beginning to see the the, the price effect uh, for that reason, plus the others that have been discussed. America uh, has a ban on exporting some sorts of oil. What impact does that have on on your business? And can you ever see that? that restriction changing? 
I, the, the, the pressure is building and support for an end to the prohibition is, is building in places, you know, outside the industry, which, which, which is good. Uh, what, what's prohibited is the export of crude oil to markets other than Canada. Uh, that's having a, a dampening effect on, on pr- the price of light tide oil from these shale plays in the United States because that oil is competing with heavy oil in the Gulf Coast market, which is very important. And uh, when you have light oil competing with heavy oil, you know, the, 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 the value is going to go down. And that's reflected in a, in a discount between West Texas Intermediate Crude and Brent Crude. Bob, thanks for joining us. Bob Tippy there joining us live uh, from Texas. Nick Dunn's still with us, CFO, of, uh, Chief Financial Officer of, of Gatwick. I mean, airports go through colossal amounts of, of fuel. Um, what, what's your view on, on the long-term place of, of the oil price? It must have a huge impact on, well, we know it has a big impact on, on airline carriers. Well, ex- exactly. I think the short-term impact will probably be fairly marginal because most airlines will have hedged uh, in the short term for their cost of uh, cost of aviation fuel. But you know, a, a lower fuel price in the long term must be good news for aviation overall. Uh, but still, you know, we're talking about uh, ninety dollars a barrel. That's still twice what it was, um, maybe only seven years ago. And therefore. You know, for the aviation industry, fuel efficiency and new aircraft and new technology of aircraft is or continues to be very, very important. James, you, you were busting to get in earlier, James Spencer from, from Portland Fuel. I mean, that's an interesting point, isn't it, that we, we think of it as, as cheap. But actually, where is oil, the oil price on a, on a long-term perspective? Is it still high? Um, well, I, I would say everything kind of is the new norm. I'd say it's fairly, you know, people have become used to the fact that $100 a barrel seems fairly normal. I mean, I, I remember when I used to work for BP in the 90s, it was $7 a barrel. I mean, that wasn't that wasn't long ago. I mean, it's, it's kind of staggering <clears throat> to think of $7 a barrel. I mean, it's just kind of, <laughs> it's impossible to imagine now. But on a long-term um, trend, do you expect uh, the oil price to continue rising? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's two factors. I mean, I, I think you cannot get away from rising population. You know, we, we were I was, when I was born, I was the fourth billion person in the world. Now we've got seven billion people. So in 40-odd years, the world population has gone up by 75%. So... And that's going to continue. You know, we're 10 billion in 10 years. These, these, the, the increase in population means people want more mobility. They want more power. They want more. They want light. They, you know, yes, commodities of all sorts are going to keep uh, the demand for it is going to keep growing. Shale oil has been a, you know, thank goodness for shale oil, really, because without it, you know, you could argue uh, we really would have serious problems. The big question mark on shale oil is how long is the yield going to be there's there's no evidence that shale oil is going to you know that they're they're not conventional oil oil fields which may mean that they kind of their production peaks in the early days and then they slow off and then dies away. Um, so there is a bit of uncertainty so long term mickey in answer to your question yes i mean uh, you would be it would be a strange world uh, where population can rise so rapidly and we don't demand more commodities james thanks a lot james spencer there and you also heard from bob tippy Nick Dunn and from Jane Foley.